Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about auxiliary lifting for Atlas stone loading. So a lot of us uh, are big fans of the Atlas stones. I know it's one of my favorite things to do, um, but just lifting heavy Atlas stones all the time can be actually detrimental to your training. So you want to think of it more of a conjugate method style training where you want to actually get better at lifting Atlas stones to platforms without actually always lifting the Atlas stone to a platform and maxing out every time. So some of the things we do at the gym, uh, we might do things a little bit differently, but um, one of the major exercises that we will do uh, for Atlas stone loading is the stone to shoulder. So what we'll do is we'll take a lighter Atlas stone and work up heavier. And we'll put this into some different Metcons and EMOMs and trying to um, work with lighter stones, but moving them more quickly. So we use them more like an Olympic lift. So when you have to get the stone from your lap to your shoulder as opposed to a platform, you have to be a lot more explosive. It teaches you proper hip drive. It teaches you to be more explosive and quicker, um, which will always help. So if you're more of a grinder and you're good at these events where you're having to grind for long periods of time, throw in some stone to shoulder to work some of that explosive strength. It's, it's the strongman version of the Olympic lifts and it's a very easy way to get more explosive with the event itself. Another thing we'll throw in is complexes. So what we might do is take a light atlas stone and work two pulls to the lap, to the ground. On the third, you're gonna take it to the lap and then to your chest, like a loading, and then to your shoulder. So a complex might be one to the lap, one to the shoulder, or one to the lap, one to the belly, one to the shoulder. Or maybe two to the lap, two to the belly, two to the shoulder and that counts as one. You would just slowly work your way up in stone weights or you might use it as part of a conditioning workout. So every minute on the minute you might do, on the odds you might do that stone complex, on the evens you might do pull-ups or ab rollouts or something like that to um, kind of break it up, get you some conditioning, but also work that explosive power with the stone. Next thing I want to talk about is good mornings. So good mornings are a staple here at Blind Dog. We do this a lot in different um, formations all through the week. So we'll hit good morning sometimes two, three times a week. Um, we do them differently. So we use them as a warm up. Uh, we'll use them with bands. We'll wrap the band around the neck and under our feet. We'll do a band in good mornings for high reps. But we like to finish off a lot of our workouts with sets of good mornings, working up to a heavy five, sometimes to a heavy three, um, sometimes both. We'll work up to a heavy five and then work up to a heavy three. Uh, we like to keep the rep ranges at three or five. Um, it's not necessarily do a, a single, those beat you up a lot. So we try to keep the rep ranges a little higher or a little higher than the single. So threes and five work really well for us. We're, uh, we will use belts for this. We're not afraid to throw a belt on. Um, you're working all the muscles with the good morning that you're going to use with Atlas stone loading. So you're working upper back with stability. You're working your lower back. You're using your, your stomach, your hamstrings, your glutes. Everything that's going to make those Atlas stones pop up is what we're working with the good morning. Um, we'll do good mornings from a variety of positions. So feet narrow, feet wide. Um, we'll put them in a uh, set of chains hanging from the rack and we'll start at the bottom position and come up kind of an Anderson style good morning. Um, we'll also use very different bars. So we kind of like to use the camber bar or the safety squat bar because it keeps the bar on your back a little bit better, but we'll go to a straight bar as well. Anything that's going to do that same good morning exercise, but shake it up enough that you're not getting stagnant with it. Um, like I said, keep the rep ranges at three to five when you're heavier. Uh, you can go uh, tens and fifteens with a band or a lightweight, but uh, work those good mornings. I think you'll get a lot of benefit out of it. All right, let's talk some upper back work. Um, upper back work can be done throughout the week. We, um, we are known for a lot of volume. So we train upper back. I personally train upper back four to five times a week. Um, not always super heavy, but you're hitting face pulls and, and tear aparts and, and bent over lat raises and that kind of things throughout the week. But we do hit a major upper back work at least twice a week. Um, usually it's part of our upper body workouts. Sometimes we'll hit it as part of our deadlift workouts as well. The upper back is huge with Atlas Stones. So um, we, we've already talked about the good mornings and working the lower back and the hamstrings and the glutes. Now we're gonna work up the spine and then into the upper back. You can also throw in some neck work. Um, I'm a big believer in neck work for any kind of pulling movement. Um, so you can work that. So what we're looking at for our upper back work is heavy bent over rows heavy dumbbell rows, 
We're doing lap pull downs, seated rows, bent over lat raises, tear aparts, face pulls, um, anything that's going to work those lats and rear delts and work them really hard. Um, you really can't get those strong enough. Not only is it going to help your atlas stones, but it's going to help all your pulling movements and it's really going to help your bench press, believe it or not. So work that upper back, get stronger up there, don't leave any stone unturned. All right, last thing we're going to talk about is curls today both arm curls and leg curls. Uh, one of the major things we see with Atlas stone loading is the torn bicep. Um, it happens out of the blue a lot of times. It happens with lighter weights a lot of the times when you're not thinking you're going too fast. Um, Shane Rickman, my boy Shane Rickman, how you doing Shane? We had, uh, we had a competition here one time. Shane was the first athlete on the first stone of the first event of the day. Um, it was like 145 pounds. Shane could probably have played ping pong with a stone that big and blew his bicep out uh, lifting it. So after I saw that, I started to really incorporate uh, some bicep curls back into our programming. It's not a big deal, guys. You're, you're, you're not a wuss if you do bicep curls. They make you look jacked, and they're going to help you stay healthy. So we added hammer curls, barbell curls, barbell curls with an axle bar, anything that's going to work those biceps. Um, you can't have a weak link, especially when the stones get heavier. Um, you want to make sure that everything is strong, top to bottom. So throw in some, ham some hammer curls at the end of your workout or part of your warm-up. We do it a lot as a warm-up. Uh, throw those in. Also, leg curls. So leg curls for the hamstrings. We've got to build those hamstrings up because that's your first prime mover off the ground with the Atlas Stone. So we, we do hamstring curls from a seated and lying position. Uh, you can do them with a, with a uh, machine, but we use bands all the time. So make sure you get your curls in. Uh, they're not just for bodybuilding. They're going to do you well with the stones.